Grace to you in peace in the name of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is on behalf of the officers and members of this church that I welcome you to this time of worship, whether you're gathered in our sanctuary or are joining us via our live stream. We are glad that on this day we are able to take a step that returns us, gets us closer to normalcy, as certainly taking away social distancing and being able to sit in your favorite pew <laughs> is something that we haven't been able to do. And we celebrate that step. We do ask that you continue to wear your mask while we're in the sanctuary. We're confident by the end of this month we'll be able to remove that barrier as well, and then we will know that we are fully back. In all of these ways, however, as we come together, as we show compassion and love toward one another, as we open ourselves to the leading of God's Spirit, we come together as people offering hearts of praise. Let us worship God. Please join me in the call to worship. We worship in the name of our triune God. Let us praise God the Creator, who is filled with glory and power, with holiness and splendor. Let us worship God the Savior, who is filled with love and compassion, with justice and peace. 
Let us experience God the Spirit. Who fills us with faith and joy, with love and eternal life. We gather in the name of the Holy One, whose love is without end. may be seated. We come in this moment once again reminded that though we serve a perfect God, we are imperfect in our efforts to follow. And thus we need moments like this one when we confess our sin, trusting in the one who is both faithful and just to forgive us all, all unrighteousness. Let us come together now in a time of confession, first aloud and together, using the words found printed in your bulletin, followed by a time of silent and individual confession. Let us pray. Loving God, you nourish us with your love and grace every day. When we live in you, your love flows out of us into every relationship, every word, every thought, every action. Help us to give your love to others so that all will blossom in your creative and forgiving love. Help us to live out your love at home, at work, at school, on the road, and with friends, neighbors, and strangers. Hear us now as we remember specific people and events and ask for your forgiveness and help to be more loving.
Hear the good news. Jesus Christ came into this world to live and die for you and for me. And because he was raised, we can be assured of forgiveness from all that we have done and left undone. The unshakable, unquenchable love of God be with you. The joyous communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verses 10 to 15. The Israelites are in the land of Moab, and Moses has been told by God to assemble everybody so he can renew their covenant. Hear the word of God. You stand assembled today, all of you, before the Lord your God, the leaders of your tribes, your elders, and your officials, all the men of Israel, your children, your women, and the aliens who are in your camp, both those who cut your wood and those who draw your water, to enter into the covenant of the Lord your God, sworn by an oath which the Lord your God is making with you today in order that he may establish you today as his people and that he may be your God as he promised you and as he swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I am making this covenant, sworn by an oath not only with you who stand here with us today before the Lord our God, but also to those who are not here with us today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I would invite children who are gathered in other places to come and gather at the screen that we might have a time together. Hello, boys and girls. We have been telling the story of Noah. We're finished with the story of Noah, but that was a story about a lot of water. And I want to tell another story in the Bible that's about water. And just like the story of Noah was about a promise God made, this story is also about a promise that God makes to us. And so Jesus was baptized. You know, your moms and your dads brought here, you here when you were little and you were baptized and water was put on you. Well, I want to talk about the promises that are made to us because of what happened when Jesus was baptized. So Jesus came to John the Baptist and he asked to be baptized, which means that he went in the water. And here's the first promise of what happened. And we use the shell to talk about this promise. The first thing that happened, the first promise, is that God says that he will wash us. When, when we sort of feel icky about some things that have happened and things that we have done, things that we call sin, things that we've done against people and that we've done against God, then God washes us. And so that's the first promise, that, that we get to be clean again. Well, then, then, as Jesus came up out of the water, we hear the second promise promise, where we hear that the heavens opened and a dove descended and the Spirit of God. So remember how in Noah we talked about the fact that the dove was part of God's Spirit and God's work, and we talk about that as the Holy Spirit. And so this is the next promise, that God is with us in the Holy Spirit. So no matter where we go, God is right there. So now we come to the next promise that happens. And so, as Jesus came up out of that water, and as the heavens opened, a voice from heaven said, You are my beloved child. You're my beloved son. Well, we're brothers and sisters of Jesus, and here's where we're the family of God. We're the family of God because we're in the church, because Jesus makes us family. So that's the promise, that no matter where you live, no matter where you are, you can find other brothers and sisters. Well, here's the last promise. And this promise really comes because of what happened to Jesus as Jesus went about teaching us how to love God and how much God loves us. So the last promise is that when we mess up, just like a caterpillar becomes a butterfly, God will help make something new and beautiful out of that. God will help us do things differently and live differently. That's what the resurrection is. That's a word we don't use much. So these are the promises that God makes to wash us, to be with us in the Holy Spirit, to call us family, sons and daughters and brothers and sisters, and to say, oh my goodness, when we need a do-over, that that's what God gives us. Those are the promises. Pray with me. Dear God, thank you that you are a God who makes promises. And the promise is that you love us and that you are with us and we belong to your family and you always help us to do better. Thank you for Jesus who makes these promises true for us. Amen. See you later. Hope you're back in church soon or that we can be together for Vacation Bible School or at some point soon we can see each other. Today I want to spend time on a few things that make us Presbyterian. This is a teaching sermon. And so I want to start with 
the very first thing that's number one, that's at the very top, that is at the very core of what it means to be Presbyterian. And that is accepting the biblical truth, the joyful truth, that God first loves us. God loves us before we enter the world, before we make our first sound, before we take our first step, before we ever do anything. God loves us. And God keeps on loving us through our mess-ups and our failures and our sins. God loves us and surrounds us with beauty and with the things that we need for life. God pursues a relationship with us, not just once in a while, but constantly. God seeks a relationship in which we are clear that God promises to be our God and in which we promise to be God's people that we commit to live in God's ways. God speaks of this kind of covenant. I will be your God and you will be my people in Exodus 20. God has brought the people through the Red Sea and gathered them at Mount Sinai, where God gives the Ten Commandments. So that in our commitment to love God, we will also know how to love people. What we heard just a moment ago in our reading from Deuteronomy 29 is God establishing the very same covenant again, the very same promise. Only at this moment, the people are being prepared to enter into the promised land. Friends, God does not give up on us. Even when we judge ourselves as failures, God does not give up on us. Even when we judge others as unworthy and we treat them unkindly, God does not give up on us. Even when shame and guilt and dread run cold inside us, and even or the lives of others. God does not give up on us. The sign of this is Jesus, the Son of God, God in the flesh, who comes to seek us. The sign of this is baptism, in which through water and the Holy Spirit we are claimed as Christ's own forever. So let us turn to the Gospel of Matthew, to Jesus' own baptism, where we find again the promise of God's love for us through Christ. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 to 17, let us pray. God, through your Holy Spirit, plant your living word deep within us. God, may you bless the reading and hearing of your word for our growth and maturity as followers of Jesus Christ. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Jesus has traveled from Galilee. 
into the desert around the Jordan, which is typically about a four days journey on foot. As he sees the sun shining on the water and as he hears it flowing, the heat and the dirt and the grit and the dust of the road stir a longing in him to be cleansed. Mindful of John the Baptist's insecurity and hesitation to baptize him, Jesus goes down under the water. And just as he comes up dripping and sputtering water and mud, the heavens open as the Spirit of God comes down so that heaven and earth meet in Jesus. Then a voice says from heaven to all who are present, this is my Son, the Beloved. With him I am well pleased. I have chosen him. God blesses Jesus, bringing us back to this core biblical truth that baptism is yet another moment when God acts first, choosing to love us before we even know that we need God's amazing love before we can do anything to even receive God's love, before we have words or actions to try to grab onto God's love. Here in Jesus' baptism, all the things that happen for Jesus turn into promises that God makes to us. In the waters of baptism, we are washed, we are cleansed, we are renewed, we are refreshed and restored. As God promises, sin will not have the last word. As the Holy Spirit comes down to teach us and to guide us, to disciple us, we receive the promise that we are never alone. And in the voice of heaven declaring God's Jesus is God's beloved. God is promising that just as Jesus belongs to him, we too are a child of God. We are one of the beloved children. We belong to the family of God. And every family has a place that it gathers. And so we have had this pattern of calling the church God's house. But that is such (laughs) such an in a statement that does not express who God is because God cannot be confined in this building. And as we've just lived through COVID, we know that as the people of God, it's not about the building, but it's about who we are gathered in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so these three promises are the promises made at our baptism, particularly if we were baptized as infants. And they are our expression of our love of God. And so we ask, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And we ask, will you be Christ's faithful disciples, obeying God's word and showing his love? And then last, we ask parents of young children relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach your faith to your child? Baptism is just as full of water and mess as our birth into the world was and it is just as permanent. A second feature that makes us Presbyterian is that we take Jesus' command to make disciples teaching all that he has taught us seriously. And so we are a people of preparation. Presbyterians like preparation. We believe in preparation, and especially when it comes to major life or major faith events. And so it's built right into our Constitution, right into the Book of Order of the Presbyterian Church USA, 
the expectation that your church will prepare you to make and to keep promises. If you want to be married in a Presbyterian church, then you will receive premarital counseling. We talk with you about what it is to live your faith in marriage. We support you in developing relationship skills, and we work to help you strengthen your marriage for the years ahead. If you want to have a child baptized or be baptized yourself, then we talk to you about the gift and purpose of baptism. And if you are a young person wondering what it means to believe in Jesus, then we offer a confirmation program offering young people faith practices and various ways to get to know Jesus. If you want to become a member of the church, or at least learn more about what it means to make a profession of faith in Jesus Christ, then we offer new member classes. So you can get to know us, we can get to know you, and you can explore your faith in Jesus. If the nominating committee senses you have gifts of an elder or a deacon, and that you sense that God is calling you to serve as a church officer, then we train you in the beliefs and ways of Presbyterian leadership. Yes, we Presbyterians build preparation right into the very fabric of our life together because we want each of us to enter into the promises of being a spouse or a parent or a church member, or a church officer, trusting in God to support you and to love you through the ups and downs that are surely coming and are surely part of making and keeping promises. All Christian commitments flow out of the promises and the questions that are asked, the promises that we make in baptism. For God's promises and ours are the foundation of our life together. And so if you come to a new members class, if you come through confirmation, if you come to be ordained as an officer, we will again ask you, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, and who is your Lord and Savior. Our life together is based on our response. For just as God loves us, our response back is that we will love God and we will love our neighbor. Today we ordain elders and deacons and install them to assume responsibility to lead this people of God. They will lead us for the next three years. How will they do that? Where will they take us? How will our leaders lead us? In this, we must look to Jesus Christ. We must look to him as our model and trust in the promise of the Holy Spirit to direct and guide us as we seek to guide and direct the people of God. We are to pray for our leaders, just as we pray for our parents, just as we pray for those who enter into the promises of marriage. The third feature that I want to lift up is that every one of the structures of the promises that we make are all based on what we see in Scripture. And so if we look at the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments start with four that have to do with how we love God, and six about how we love our neighbor. And if we look at the Lord's Prayer, it starts with our praise and our reliance and trust upon God, and then we move into how it is we are to love our neighbor. And so is the same thing for the questions that we ask our elders and deacons. We start with four questions. 
about loving God. And then we move into four more questions about loving the world that our God has made. Here's the heart of who we are. God loves us. And our life is based on our promises. God's faithfulness is sure. But our life is based on our promises to love God back and to love our neighbor. May we be this people. May we love because we are loved. Amen. As we've just heard reaffirmed, uh, as people of faith, we do prepare in all kinds of ways And on this particular Sunday each year, it's a moment when we celebrate individuals who've responded to the call of leadership in our church as deacons and as ruling elders. In this era of COVID, all of their training occurred online. Their approval by the session occurred online. We pre-recorded them responding to the questions online. And yet, along the way, we were reminded, too, of the limits to our human abilities and all of the planning that we strive to do. So in what you will witness, you will see what began with 17 persons who were able to gather on that night. And we'll tell you that every one of them was on the screen when we started recording. And then when we saw the recording later, five of them were missing. Two of them popped in later. And so we have photos of all of those who have been elected to serve in this church. We also, I told them, given this preparation, that none of them needed to be here this morning. But several are. And so what I'd like to do, as we've been doing throughout this COVID season, is I want us to do something hybrid here. Namely, I would invite those who are being ordained and installed to come join me here at the baptismal font to give them the opportunity to respond before you to the questions that I will be posing to them on the screen. And then, as you will see in that moment in the service when there's the prayer and the laying on of hands, the transfer of the leadership from one generation to the next, I invite those of you who are seated in the pews, those of you who are watching online, who have previously been ordained as a ruling elder or a minister of word and sacrament, to lift your hand as passing on the Spirit. So, I would invite our officers elect, I see a few here, to come join me. Uh, as we move to this time of great celebration. Friends, we now come to a time of great joy in our life as a body of faith as we ordain and install 20 individuals who have responded to the call to ministry that has come to them through this family of believers. Each of them were nominated and presented to the congregation in February of this year. You unanimously endorsed them for this time of service and they have engaged in a time of preparation And then just a couple of weeks ago, they were approved by our session for this time of service. Uh, We are joined together. And in addition then to our officers elect, I'm joined by Julie Toner, our clerk of session. Friends, we are called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling to be disciples and servants of our servant Lord. 
Within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as ruling elders, and as ministers of the word and sacrament. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us, providing for ministries of caring and compassion in the world, ordering the governance of the church, and preaching the word and administering the sacraments. Representing the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the session of Doylestown Presbyterian Church now ordains Mark Chaikin, Olivia Ferrara, John Gwynn, Mason Keller, Dennis Parenti, Linda Schumann, Krista Spott, and Eileen Telly to the office of deacon and ordains Doug Barnett, Tanner Benson, Riley Bloor, Lauren Hunter, Greg Jensen, and Janice Thomas to the office of ruling elder and installs each of them to active service on their respective boards. It also installs to active service Mike Paradiso, who has previously, who was, had been previously ordained as deacon, and Glenda Childs, Judy Cody, Jenny Danzis, Sherry Hoynek, and Katie Toner, who have previously ordained as a ruling elder. Friends, as you know, we ordain on behalf of the larger church. And so I would ask that you in this moment respond to the question, constitutional questions that are posed to all who are called to serve as deacons and ruling elders in the Presbyterian Church USA. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, do you? I do. Do, you, do. Do, you. do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit, a unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Do you? I do. I do. I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic? and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do. And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Do you and will you? I, I do. And I will. I will. Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? I will. I will. Will you be governed by our church's quality and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? I will. I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? I will. I will. I will. I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? I do. I do. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? I will. Well, well. Those of you who have been called as deacons, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need. In your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? I will. I will. And to ruling elders. Will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? I will. I will. Do we, the members of the church, accept Doug Barnett, Tanner Benson, Riley Bloor, Mark Chaikin, Glenda Childs, Judy Cody, Jenny Dances, Olivia Ferrara, John Gwynn, Sherry Hoynek, Lauren Hunter, Greg Jensen, Mason Keller, Mike Paradiso, Dennis Parenti, Linda Schumann, Krista Spott, Eileen Telly, Janice Thomas, and Katie Toner 
as deacons or ruling elders, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ. We do. Do we agree to encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ who alone is head of the church? We do. Friends, in scripture, we are told that in times of transition in leaders, there was a moment known as the laying on of hands, when those who had previously been set apart to serve in those particular ways would come forward and lay their hands upon those who are now assuming that mantle of leadership. Were we able to gather in this sanctuary behind me, we would be surrounded in this moment by previous ruling elders and and ministers of word and sacrament. Uh, But on this occasion, it will be a virtual laying on of hands as I do so on behalf of our session and invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your steadfast faithfulness to us. In every age, you have called forth leaders to serve you and equip them with your gifts. Among your people, Israel, you anointed prophets, priests, and rulers. You called pastors and teachers, bishops, elders, and deacons to build up your church. With Moses, the 70 elders bore the burdens of your people, ministering in the power of your spirit. Alongside the apostles, deacons cared for all in need and guarded the community's peace. In the church, deacons, elders, and pastors served together so that your whole people might be equipped for ministry and built up into the full unity of Christ. For your servants in every age, O God, and for the church of Jesus Christ, we give you all thanks and praise. God of grace, pour out your Holy Spirit on Mark Chaikin, Olivia Ferrara, John Gwen, Mason Keller, Mike Paradiso, Dennis Parenti, Linda Schumann, Krista Spott, and Eileen Telly, that they may be faithful deacons in the church. Give them openness to the Holy Spirit's leading, that they may see and serve wherever there is need. Train them in the school of prayer, that they may express the compassion of Christ for the poor and the friendless, the sick, the grieving, and the trouble. Equip them with courage to bear the gospel into halls of power and to communicate your presence and might among those who are powerless. In everything, give them the mind of Christ, who did not grasp at greatness, but emptied himself to become a servant of your reign. Give them joy in their walk of faith and a sure sense of your abiding presence for their work of ministry. God of grace, pour out your Holy Spirit on Doug Barnett, Tanner Benson, Riley Allure, Glenda Childs, Judy Cody, Jenny Danzis, Sherry Hoynack, Lauren Hunter, Greg Jensen, Janice Thomas, and Katie Toner, that they may be your faithful ruling elders in the church. Give them prudence and sound judgment, wisdom and courage to order the life of the church in obedience to your word. Nourish them in the life of the Holy Spirit, that they may exercise the ministry of discipline with humility and compassion. Guide them in governance on this session and every council of the church, that they may be servant leaders following Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life to set others free. Give them joy in their walk of faith and a sure sense of your abiding presence for their work of ministry. Gracious God, through the waters of baptism, you have claimed us as your own and called us to share in Christ's ministry. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that we may discern the gifts you have given. 
calling them forth from one another and together using these gifts for the good of all. Make us strong in Christ to live as your people and show forth your saving love in the world by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, you are now deacons and ruling elders in the Doylestown Presbyterian Church and for the Church Universal. God has called you to this moment. God has equipped you for the work ahead. And so our blessing for you on this day is one of great joy for your acceptance of this call and prayers for God's grace and peace and strength upon you in all the days and years ahead. God bless you. So before those who are present here return to their seats, do want to point out to you some of our new officers, Sherry Hoynek, ruling elder, Mark Chaikin, deacon, Judy Cody, ruling elder, Doug Barnett, ruling elder, Jenny Danzis, ruling elder, Dennis Parenti, deacon, Glenda Childs, elder, Eileen Telly, deacon, John Gwynn, Deacon Jim Bloor, Deacon Linda Schumann, Deacon and Riley Bloor, Elder. Let us welcome our new officers. Thank you all. We, we've just proven you can't stop the Holy Spirit. Whatever, whatever our limitations are, we celebrate this moment of being able to gather like this and will say and confess to you that I hope we never have to go through this year again. <laughs> would like to share with you a few of joys and concerns of the church. Uh, would remind you that we have a DPC's Connect card that's available through our website, a place for you to pass on prayer concerns or to connect with our congregation in other ways to get more information about our life. We'd encourage you to use that as a, a way of communicating back to the pastors and to the staff. We are moving into our summer pattern with our Bridges and Beacons, our devotional series, and we're having that every Wednesday during the summer, and it's an opportunity for members to share their gifts with us in that effort. One of the things that we've heard throughout this year of Bridges and Beacons is how much you enjoy hearing from fellow members. And so one of the things that we would invite you to do as a member is to think of a favorite Bible story and to share a devotional with your congregation. And there are people in our staff who can help you with that, with the, with the wording, if that's helpful, the scripture that you might need, hymns, but also the recording of that, encourage you to share your gifts with us in that way over the weeks ahead. Week after this coming one is our Summer Spiritual Renewal, an event sponsored for all adults by our Senior Adult Ministry. You can find information about that outdoor event uh, through our website and encourage you to come and be part of it. And then to remind you that next Sunday there will be a congregational meeting that will happen at 1030 and we will be hybrid those who are present here can be part of that meeting. There will be Zoom information about how you can join us as well. I uh, encourage you to come and be part of that time with us. The tidings maps out for you the agenda, the main items that will be part of that event. As we come before God in prayer on this day, aware of two individuals in the hospital, uh, Barbara Quigley, who is at Doylestown, uh, Freda Lake asked for prayers for a friend named George, who is in Abington, and his wife, uh, Beverly. Uh, some of you have heard of the tragedy involving four uh, students at Central Bucks High School East. Uh, one young man died, uh, Nick Menino, and we will certainly lift up him and his family in prayer, uh, and three others who were in the car, one critically injured, the prayers for all of them and their loved ones. Would also lift up in prayer, Laura Ingebreth on the death of her mother, Beverly Morris on June the 1st, to keep in prayer Rich and Andy Smith on the death of Rich's father, Wallace, who died on Friday at the age of 105. 
and uh, prayers for the family of Bob Figuera, who was a member of our church for 69 years, almost a third of the history of our congregation. A service celebrating Bob's life will be in this sanctuary uh, on Saturday of this week at 11 uh, o'clock. Family will be gathering at 10 uh, prior to, to greet visitors, and then there'll be a reception following at the Masonic Temple. And so I encourage you to keep all of those individuals in prayer as momentarily we turn to prayer. Uh, but first, I want to offer our congratulations on the screen uh, to those that we know from our congregation who will be graduating in the coming days. Please join me in prayer. O oh God of all beginnings and endings, we gather on this day with hearts of praise. We celebrate the warmer days and the promise of summer. We give thanks for the return to pre-pandemic life and the incremental steps of return that continue to occur. We celebrate your covenantal love as promised to the descendants of Abraham and Sarah and revealed most fully in the one baptized by John. Thus, as your children, we gather on this new day, declaring once more our gratitude and trust. As a community of faith, we give thanks for the women and men we have installed as deacons and ruling elders. We trust that you have called them to this time of service and pray that we will support, encourage, and walk faithfully alongside them as they begin this time of sharing their gifts. We also thank you for those whose term as church officers concludes on this day. May they experience a sense of completion and joy as they enter into a new season of faithful service. May they be assured of our abiding gratitude for all the ways they blessed this congregation. We remember and celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates as well, their hard work and dedication that has resulted in this moment. As they conclude this significant chapter of life, help them to know both of our pride and of your continued leading as they move into what comes next. And as this challenging year draws to a close, for all educators and school staff, may they know of our deep appreciation for all that they did. Give them a sense of completion as well and rest in the weeks ahead. We pray on this day, O oh God, for the families of Bob Figuera, Beverly Morris, Wallace Smith, and Nick Mannino, knowing that while their time on earth has ended, their eternal rest with you has just begun. We do pray for your comfort for all who grieve this day, for all who are seeking your healing and recovery, for Barbara and George, and for those three other CB East students. 
for all those who wait for surgery or treatment to start. May each of them be strengthened by your abiding presence. And may we offer our compassion and support in ways that assure them they are not alone, but instead are sustained by your love and ours. May we be reminded in this moment of worship and in all the days that follow that there is nothing that can break the bond of your love for us. And thus renewed in our readiness to follow and to move forward from whatever endings we face now toward the beginning you have already created. We bring you our praise. All this we offer in the name of Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Friends, our confessions hold this statement, that in life and in death we belong to Jesus Christ. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us spotless before the throne of grace. Unto him be all power and dominion and glory now and forevermore. Amen. Go to love and serve the Lord.